Hi, I'm Terry Ferris, and I'll be reading to you today out of P.S. Goodbye. It's my prequel novella to my Heritage series, and I just love it how it introduces us to Heritage, and we fall in love with the characters. And I also chose it because it's free right now across all ebooks, so it's a great chance to get it if you're looking for something new to read this spring. Also, I'm starting it, I'm picking it up partway through the first scene. Uh, Caroline has just been dumped by her boyfriend of uh, four years, and she's gone over to her cousin Nate's house, and they're having a, um, a conversation. He's just moved to town as well, and they're having a conversation about that. Stealing my food? Caroline bumped her head on the freezer door. Ouch! Didn't mean to startle you, Nate leaned against the counter, crossing one foot over the other, his dark hair flopping into his eyes. The guy needed a haircut and a shave. I'm not stealing your food, cousin. I'm sharing it. Caroline rubbed at the small bump on the top of her head. Have you eaten yet? No. Nate traveled from her dripping hair to the bare toes. What happened to you? I thought you had a date. Caroline pulled out a pan of lasagna from the fridge and slid it into the oven and turned the temperature to 350. The rain happened. As far as the date, I don't want to talk about it. He bailed on you again? He pointed to the oven. Aren't you supposed to preheat that or something? It's a glass pan. Better to let it heat up with the oven. She shot, him a, gl shot a glare at her cousin. As far as the date, I said I don't want to talk about it. Nate pushed away from the counter and took a seat at the table. You need to wake up and realize you can do better than Mason Peterson. The, the only guy I've ever liked that you didn't hate was Grant Quinn. And that was because he was your best friend. Or maybe it was because... I was all of 13 at the time, and you knew I didn't stand a chance. Well, he was 18. Your crush was more amusing than anything. When you wrote his name on the bottom of your shoes, Nate's laughter filled the room. That was humiliating, is the word you're looking for. She set the glasses on the table with a thud. Give me a break. It was my first crush, Grant Quinn. The name still stirred a mountain of unwelcome feelings. What Nate didn't know is that the summer she'd been 18, Grant had been home on leave from the RV and they'd reconnected at a pet party in Canton. They had stayed up all night talking by a bonfire on the beach of a small private lake, just talking, but still, the memory had caused her heart to do that stupid hop thing. It hadn't been just his looks either, either which had caused many girls whiplash over the years. It had been his calm confidence about him that he had looked at her in a way that made her feel seen, that even though everything around of her life was crum crumbling at that point, she wasn't alone. She told him she'd write, which she did. He promised to write back, which he didn't. Nate mentioned later that Grant had gotten back together with his high school sweetheart. That was the day she learned that feelings couldn't be trusted. Lists and plans could. An expression she couldn't decipher filled Nate's face. Speaking of Grant, he's single, you told me. Not gonna happen. I don't care if my 23 to his 28 makes sense now. Growing up has taught me that Grant isn't the type of guy I would marry. The type of guy who had made her feel too much, want too much, and the end, in the end made her hurt too much. Why would anybody want to yearn for somebody else? There's no way she would walk that road again. Besides, rule number four, no rebounding. Caroline, it's true. Caroline opened the fridge again, grabbed a milk carton, and searched the, carbon, ex, ex, searched the expiration date. With Nate living as a bachelor, it was worth checking. It takes more than piercing turquoise eyes and a heart-stopping smile to make, Caroline, what? Caroline turned towards Nate and froze. Grant stood in the doorway behind Nate, his hands shoved deep in his pocket, only emphasized the width of his shoulders. The blonde hair that he'd worn military short was now dusted the top of his collar and curled around his ears, not to mention the scruff that Scruff, the man needed a shave, and although she wasn't usually one for facial hair, Scruffy looked good on him. Real good. There was a new red scar that lined his left cheek and wrapped over his eye, but instead of sealing his all-American boy look, it added to his roughness and made Caroline's insides go on alert. His blue-green eyes focused on her in a familiar, comforting way that warmed her to the core and yet set every nerve on edge at the same time. A small tug, a smile tugged at one corner of his mouth. Hey, Caroline. Oh, my. Talk about things not going according to plan. So that's a little bit of an excerpt from P.S. Goodbye. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed um, this little excerpt. And thank you for joining us for Wednesday. It's excerpts. So have a blessed week. Bye.